Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and uh, today we're going to make a video on Firebow and some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years and stuff like that. For starters, i got to apologize for the sound. There's constantly airplanes flying by overhead, and there's people practicing baseball and stuff over there, but it's really hard to find somewhere to go these days where there's not a lot of ambient noise. Um, but I figure the robins and stuff like that will kind of make up for it. Now, I've basically got hundreds of hours of Firebow under my belt, and I've got a lot more uh, experience with making fire through other methods also. And over the years, I've actually met a lot of cool people. I've stumbled upon some awesome techniques and just experimented a lot and come up with a lot of good tips, okay? Um, I was going to go and harvest some wild materials for making this fire kit, uh, but it's going to rain pretty soon, and I've got you know, I've got a few plans for tonight, things I have to do. So I'm just going to use a kit that I have, one of the kits that I have. I've got tons. And uh, let's get that going. Uh, see how it is. Okay, first things first. Uh, you want to clear away any debris. Uh, this is still pretty damp, most of it, so I'm not going to be totally perfect about this, but... You know, you want to clear away debris, so if you have any accidents, you know, it's not going to spread all over the place. So it's a good tidbit to remember, okay, when you're camping and stuff. Now, let's see what I've got here. I've got a bow I've been using for years. This is probably the first bow I've had, the first bow I made. And this is a sentimental bow, so I use it almost all the time. Um, i got a nice piece of leather thong here. Uh, it's real thick, it won't snap, but you can use all sorts of things. Uh, one time I even used the hem of a shirt. Um, I also keep leather bracelets and cordage around my wrists and ankles all the time. You can make uh, <laughs> cordage, which is what this is here, okay? You can use grasses and stuff to do it. It works pretty good. Uh, spruce rootlets work awesome too. So this is a, so a skill that you need to learn if you're into survival or anything like that, or just in general, making cordage is a great skill to have, and you can really improvise a lot of fixes for things if you can make string. Really good stuff. Now, let's see. I've got fireboard here, and I've got it prepped. Um, this is some good stuff, okay? This is probably white pine. Yeah, this was a white pine. So I'm going to use that. You use a piece of leather underneath it so I don't suck moisture out of the ground. Once I start building that heat, it's going to suck the moisture up. Okay, you don't want that. So I'm going to put something between my fire board and the ground. Okay, now if you look here, there's the, the part I burned in, the, the diameter of my spindle. Okay, which is good to have it, you know, 8 to 12 inches, but I usually like around 7 inches, 8 inches for my spindle length. I like to have it about half to three quarters of an inch thick. Works pretty good. And then I cut the notch. The notch is crucial. Okay, you can build a fire without it, but it's way easier with this notch. It gives a place for the sawdust and powder to collect. When you build up that friction, you're going to get a lot of powder and it's going to get really hot, like 800 degrees hot, and turn into an ember. If it's too small, there won't be enough oxygen in there and it can get stuck. If it's too big, it won't produce enough heat. So I like it. Uh, probably an eighth of my circle. Um, sometimes I've gone as big as a quarter, but around an eighth to uh, a sixth of a, the diameter is pretty good for me. Everything's a little different. And you can use a stone. I'll probably show some techniques with that, carving using stones and stuff. You can almost always find some kind of stone to carve a notch out of. Um, that's good skill to have, good practice. If you know how to do fire bow and all that stuff, practice using stones and things like that, okay? to carve it. Now, I gotta get my spindle. As you can tell, I've used these a lot. These two are yucca. Um, sometimes I love to use willow on willow because it smells nice and sweet. When you get that going, this is kind of awesome. Um, right now I'm using yucca on white pine. But it's up to you what you want to use, okay? You can vary it. So, and I need a handhold. Often you can use a piece of wood. Yeah, that's a bearing block. It's something to push down on the spindle with. Okay, so you can have that friction. 
when you're pulling back and forth with the bowstring. Um, this one's bone. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, from a bison, but it looks suspiciously like a cow to me. And uh, you know, I have that. I have some marble. I have some jasper. I even used a shot glass once. I have some wooden ones. So yeah, I'll see what I've got. Probably gonna use one of these too. I might even use this marble one I've got. This wasn't made for fire bow, but that's what I use it for. Um, I don't seem to have my wooden one in here. And I have a bunch of tinder. Okay, tinder's pretty important. You need your tinder. You need to have that set up ahead of time if you can help it. Because once you get the fire going, you should have your fire structure already built. So once you get that fire, you can put it right into the door, the opening that you left. And all your twigs and sticks will start to ignite. Then you got to nurse that thing into life, you know. So uh, now you want to wrap your spindle around the, your string around the spindle. The way I do it is I put it in between my bow and my string. I have the top end pointing down at the ground. Grab it with my thumb. I turn it so that the spindle is on the outside of the string. Okay? Let me show you that again. I put it in here, grab my thumb or finger, right? Put it in, grab the string, and I turn it. So it's in there nice and neat, okay? You wanna make sure it's tight. When it's not tight, it slips. You're wasting energy. So now I'm, uh, I just made a hole here. You can use a stone. You can even use the, the end of your spindle and press a depression into the wood. Okay? And just start carving around that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife to save time. And I'm going to carve my notch ahead of time because I'm used to doing this. So I also flare out the bottom of the notch a little bit. Okay? Because it gives a place for that, that dust to collect, it allows the oxygen to mix with it and also protects it a little bit from the elements. Now, don't cut towards yourself like I just did. That's really stupid. Now, I also like to keep this part pretty smooth, okay? Because if not, uh, the powder can get a little stuck and break apart your ember a little bit. Uh, I just like to keep that smooth if I can. Now, if I use a stone, I use the stone like a saw, not like a knife. And that actually smooths it out pretty good. Uh, but as you can tell, this is fairly smooth. Uh, I flared it just a little bit, but not a whole lot this time, just because I'm lazy. Um, well, because it's starting to rain. So let's get this going. I gotta burn in my circumference. And then, uh, actually I'll start kind of slow, and then I'll increase the pressure and increase speed when I'm pretty close to achieving my ember. Okay, let's get that going. So. Let me take some of my tinder. I'm gonna tuck it into the notch to, just to help collect some of that powder, speed things up a bit for me. And uh, I'm gonna save my tinder bundle over here, which is tiny, um, before I breathe life into it. That's a whole nother story. Okay. So I'm gonna wrap it around, just like I said. There are a million ways to do your bow. I like to put a hole through the thing. I actually used the chicken bone to drill this hole. And uh, I tie an end of my cordage, and I wrap it around it, and I hold it with my hand. That way I can adjust it real quickly without having to stop and untie it and let things cool down and stuff. For me, it works better. It's quick and easy. Um, also, I like to go barefoot because I like that intimacy, and I also like... Uh, I could tell what the temperature is and stuff like that, and I could keep the fireboard a bit more stable. That's just how I am. A lot of people don't do that, and you don't need to. In fact, you probably shouldn't, but that's just how I do it. So I wrap it in there. I push this down on top of the spindle. I put the business end of the spindle into my notch or into my the burned-in hole, and let's get going. Now, when I stand on the board, I like to put my foot, my left foot for me, uh, right up next to my notch. Okay, so it's on the inside of my foot. Okay, I drop my shoulder down on my knee, okay, because it saves energy. You don't have to. There's a million ways to do it. This is just the way I do it when I'm teaching and stuff because I'm doing it, you know, 10 fires in a day. It saves energy. And uh, I make sure that there's like a square formed between my thigh 
my shin and stuff like that, you'll see like a box type pattern forming with my body. I like to have a, my shin at a right angle to the board, okay, perpendicular. Um, because if you lean too far forward or backwards, it can tilt your spindle and then you're wasting energy that way too. It can migrate your, your notch or your spindle. So uh, all that's pretty important too. A nice straight up and down, perpendicular to the ground, 90 degree angle. Push down on it, drop my, your shoulder onto your knee. That helps. You don't have to really focus on looking at the ember. When you look at it and focus on it like that, that also causes you to change your angles and it's not as good. Just have faith and keep going. When you think you're almost there, keep going farther, okay? Uh, until you know you have an ember. It just makes things easier. Also, I like to lock my, uh, my thumb in against my shin, okay? That helps keep things stable also. Make sure that the end of your spindle is nice and rough for friction if it's too smooth. You can either push harder to break that glaze or uh, sharpen it. Never set your knife on the ground because that's a good way to lose it or get injured. Trust me. The spindle's real short. Make sure you breathe. Try to keep the bow level with the ground. And that's all there is to it. Now, you don't see me rushing to dump this in my tinder bundle. I'm taking my time. I'm letting that ember get thicker and harder and hotter. And uh, grab a little twig. Tap that into my tinder bundle. There's a tiny tinder bundle. I'm not trying to get a fire going right now. Especially with uh, people over there. I don't want them watching. They're supposed to be doing baseball. Tap the rest of my powder onto it. Nice dark brown. Not black, because that would be burned too much. If it comes out light or tan, you're not getting enough heat or you're not pushing hard enough. There you go. That one took a while because it's pretty wet. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. So, maybe I'll add some other videos to this and make a montage, but the rain's starting, the airplanes are going. Coach over there is watching me. The woods are filled with smoke. Yeah. Okay, let me show you some of my kit. For starters, this is a turtle pouch I use. I got this off of uh, James Two Bears. Pretty cool stuff, I love this thing. Stamping turtle. You know, I rescue turtles and I love turtles, okay? Um, but, uh, I don't condone the injuring of any animals or anything like that unless you're in a survival situation and you better use all of it. Um, I got this from a Native American and I use this for teaching because I work in a Native American village. Now, um, I doctored this up with some stuff too, different sentimental things that I've had. So here we go, tinder bundle. I got shredded, I got some cordage in here. Most natural cordages work good for tinder bundles. <laughs> so this is some string I was making. 
but we're not talking about that now. Uh, this is shredded tulip poplar, some cattail fluff, some cedar. I have a lot of red cedar uh, bark, outer bark and inner bark, shredded up, put in here. I have a tulip poplar. I have all sorts of stuff, quite honestly. Okay, including basswood. Now, my spindle, this is one of the stones, one of the pieces of flint I use for carving my notches. Let's see if I can show you that real quick. Okay, it's not that bad. I just did it for a second there. You know, look. Okay, it's not bad. Uh, this is the uh, jasper, or uh, actually marble that I'm using, Pakistan marble, I believe, that I'm using for a handhold today. I have my bone here. I have my wooden ones at home, which I left at home. And I've got a deer, one from a deer femur that I broke up. That works pretty good. I found it in the woods, found the femur. There's a million things you can use for that. Stones work great because they have low friction. And one of my favorites I used was a shot glass one time. Uh, zero friction up in the handheld end. All the friction was down in the board where it should be. So that's pretty cool. Uh, hardwoods and softwoods, medium woods. I like to use medium on medium um, or hard on hard or soft on soft. But if I mix like hard and softwood, it doesn't work well. If I have a hardwood spindle on a softwood board, it just drills right through it. You know, which you can do. You just got to practice. But when you're learning, it's good to just keep them even. And I also like to mix my species. In fact, sometimes I don't even like to use the same species. I don't like to use white pine spindle on a white pine board. I like to have a different species like cedar on pine or willow on pine. <laughs> willow on cedar. I love the pine boards. I love yucca on pine. But I do love willow on willow. It smells nice and sweet. So, there's my piece of leather. I've used bark. I've used tinder bundles. I've used all sorts of things to put under my fireboard. And here comes the rain. I gotta get stuff put away, like, right now. So, look how thick these spindles are. About as, This one's not as thick as my finger. I start off with real thick spindles. Like, a lot, you know, thicker than my thumb. I figured it would be easier once I went down to thinner spindles, and it was. So keep that in mind. I gotta go.